Hey, would you be concerned if your mother has had this many <laughs> THC edibles? Listen, you know what I call them? They're a laughing pill. Oh my God! Here, take your Celsius. Thank you. I got you a tray of pizza cutter. I got a bag of weed gummies. Damn, son. <laughs> yeah. Mama knows. Pretty soon, oh these are gonna be coming from Celsius. Oh, I also didn't know if you had alcohol, so look. Well, well, finally, finally. Last time I was here, you had nothing to drink. What about now? When my mom starts drinking, her, her, the pitch of her voice just gets a little bit higher. A little bit higher. Cheers. I be feeling like the man when I walk through. Hang something what you saying when I walk through. I got all these hoes staring when I walk through. I done met a few bands on the walk through. Hey, why me walk through? Hey, why me walk through? Hey, why me walk through? I done met a few bands on the walk through. What's up, you guys? Before we get into the pod, I wanted to make sure you guys knew it's half off everything on peoplemade.shop. We got a few different types of t-shirts, super high quality. Hoodies are fire, we got three different colors. Listen, you know what we stand for. We don't believe anyone is self-made, we believe everyone is people-made. Get some merch for yourself, or how about you buy a gift for somebody that might have influenced you to be where you're at today. Peoplemade.shop, don't miss out on the drop. When it's sold out, it's over, and you don't know when the next drop's coming. Go get it. What's up, you guys, and welcome to the first ever episode of the people made show where we don't believe anyone is self-made but we believe everyone is people made if it wasn't for the people you know the people you talk to the people you encounter the people that helped you and the people that you help you wouldn't be who you are today and the people that make you give birth to <laughs> and you. we are super excited i'm super excited our first guest first off, i should probably introduce myself since this is episode one if you don't know me i'm your host sal sortino uh, we're in cleveland ohio hq and our first guest is, is someone super, super special to me. Okay, now I'm going to cry already. Oh, someone I love, someone I look up to, someone that's taught me a lot in life. Uh, pretty much all I, I knew up, up until I was 18. So um, also a very successful businesswoman herself, real estate realtor mogul, uh, top producing real estate agent in Northern Ohio, my mother. Tarina Sadoti. Hi, I, am I supposed to look at the camera? No, no, don't look at the okay. camera. But I have this soundboard set up. I would have done like a big round of applause and, and you know, like crowd. Well, San Antonio could probably add it in after the fact, maybe. No, I feel like we miss. We need some music or something. But I don't know which button is what. So practice. Well, I mean, we can't right. I won't do it right now. But I do have some cool buttons in here, uh, specifically this one right here. Damn, son. Here Damn, son! You can't hear it because we got to work on our on our uh, okay. on our audio team a little bit. We got the video team down. We're still learning the audio part a little bit, you know. But uh, but yeah, Mama's in the house. I'm here. I'm nervous. I'm no idea. <laughs> you don't have to do it, you gotta ask me. <laughs> oh shoot! I'm excited. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be. I'm so proud that I'm here. Well, thanks. You know, I've been. You've never been on a podcast before, right? No, my first one. Crazy. Virgin podcast girl. Virgin podcast girl. All the all the uh, successes you've had, no one's asked you to be on a podcast. No. You know what that means? We got to build up your social media presence because you should have been because you you got that that star power. So um, you know I, I've been on a couple, so they're fun. You know you know just chop it up, be yourself. Well, this is what we do every single day when we're together. Exactly. Twice a week, not every day. Exactly, exactly. So, but listen, I want you to kind of tell us about where you're at right now. Who who is Tarina Sedoti today? Today. Today. Where I come from. Nope, today. Um, today, you know, I don't think I, I'm going to tell you what you want. I'm not telling you what you want to Yeah, hear. don't. Because you think I'm this powerful businesswoman, successful, I make all this money. And I don't view myself that way at all. Like, I don't, I never got into real estate thinking it's going to take off and I'm going to have a million dollars in the bank. Like, for mm -hmm. me to even say that is, like, unbelievable. I started doing real estate because... I was, you know, basically a mom with two kids and I thought I'd be able to kill it. Never did I think it'd take off like it does. And to this day, I don't get joy, honestly, out of even getting my commission check. I And I know it seems like total bullshit. Like, okay, every person, I don't even know what checks I have coming in, honestly. I do what I do every Well, we don't recommend that. Do. We do recommend sorry, that you track true. your... Uh... Your my income. Girls do. My girls do. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, I know I have 16 houses in contract right now. 
you know. 16. So. Another round of applause button here. I don't know. I don't know. Or even but a bomb here effortless. right there. It feels effortless for me, honestly. So it doesn't, you know, other than dealing with other realtors that make my job unbearable, you know, um, I love what I do every single day. Like I love my clients. I know that they're the I'm the best agent to represent them. I love what I do. I, I feel that. like I'm an amazing place in life because not just professionally, but you. Sorry, I thought I had this off. Just well, it's your mute father. It. Mute it. I only have like five people on. Will you favorites. will you mute it though so it stops ringing because you're going to get calls. You pull the button down. Oh my gosh, my mother doesn't know how to mute her phone. I don't. Oh my gosh. She still uses a paper calendar. She doesn't know how to mute her phone. Holy. My paper calendar makes me lots of money. I love my paper calendar. When I think of being successful in life, maybe because I'm a mother, you can't understand this. So I, I know my career is successful and I'm, I, I know I'm confident in what I do. But what makes me feel good every single day is you, you're amazing, you know, and my handicaps on Georgia. Like, you know, when life gives you a handicapped baby, I'm going to almost start crying. Well, you're, uh, you're already get, you're getting into it deep. I am, but it's true. It's like, even to this day, my joy is he loves, Georgia loves life. Like, seriously, you know how. He has, his birthday party was like a wedding reception, you know. Yeah, it's amazing. And so in life, it's not a, to me, Maybe because I make money, you know what I'm saying? So it's probably from a different perspective. I'm, I don't need for anything or want for anything. But for me, my family being happy, and I love what I do every single day, you being the person that you are. And people know you for, you know, your businesses and how you make money, but they don't know your soul like I do. So that makes me the most proud of anything. Well, good, good. Like, like when your tenants come <clears throat> to my office and they're like, oh, you sales mom? I love sales. He's so good to me, whatever. That that brings me joy more than a commission check. And I know it sounds so fucking corny but it's true well good like you know you're definitely blessed we're all blessed you know you're blessed to just love what you do forget the money you know i would come to my great. house sometimes okay. <laughs> if somebody had a camera on me they would think i'm crazy i come down my stairs and i start crying sometimes yeah you're you are a little crazy but it's okay uh, well, but i mean i used to walk past my house on the golf course and think if i could live in that house it looks like sophia loren's house i live in a house how is that possible people have no idea you know people just see what you have now and they don't know you know yeah. they don't know that you went oh, from, let me tell you, you from shaker know. village and what but let, wait, to... let's 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 break it all the way down though like what i want to take it all the way back you know because even i don't know you tell me some stories but uh you know i think it's important your childhood has so much impact on who you are as a as an adult i really believe that you know because you know, I always talk about it all the time. You know that that it wasn't for my ch my childhood and the way that you and my dad raised me and and everyone I was around and you know where I was at, who, everything. Right? I wouldn't be who I am. So um, I'm sure people want to know. You know, what was that like for you? What was your childhood like? So the funny thing is, I felt rich growing up, and we didn't have anything. Yep. But I, honest to God, felt rich. My mom was, you know, Mimi got pregnant at 15. Crazy. So Poppy was 17. Mm -hmm. By the time I was born, she was 16. He was 18. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a bad Italian boy, Sicilian boy. Um, they called him the angel. The angels, him and my uncle, because they were so bad, they terrorized the town. They were in and out of, in and out of the tension home, stealing cars. Then Mimi, my mom, you know, my, was from Tennessee. Pat moved here to be a bricklayer and brought his family here. Mm -hmm. So then she falls in love with this bad Italian boy, which... Back in the day, like, it, the towns were discriminated against. Like, they were minorities, yep. you know? So he didn't want Mimi to date Poppy, so he moves to Castelli, which was not far away yeah. now, right? And to get her away, and she ends up pregnant at 15. Wait, moved, moved to, to Castelli, <laughs> 20 minutes away. Not even. I know. <laughs> um, and uh, so she moves, and she gets pregnant at 15 with me, you know? They didn't have to have me, you know, but that was olden days. So mm -hmm. they got married in the courthouse with my grand, my dad's dad, um, smoking a cigarette, you know, in the courthouse. And then I Collie, was born. Right? Yep. Yep. My grandpa Collie. And um, and I was born, you know, in September. Mimi turned 16 in March and I was born in September. So my my parents were kids raising me. Yep. But I don't remember. I lived in MacArthur Park, mm -hmm. you know, and I remember mom and they like I was their project. I feel like, you know, I'm going to cry because, you know, Mimi died a drug addict. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I I don't I feel bad saying that because she would hate people thinking that she had mental health issues, addiction issues. But for me, when I was little, she made me everything I am. 
And I remember they would both tuck me in at night. And I was this little toddler. And I remember they'd be out in the living room and I'd be laying there trying to go to sleep. And I would wonder what, they were like my friends. I'd wonder what they're doing. I would say, doing. Like, not what are you doing? I would just say, doing. And they'd say, you got to go to sleep. You know, it was just, I remember little moments like that. And I had so much love. I didn't think I was poor. You know, I mean, we weren't really, I, I guess we, we weren't poor because my grandparents just always provided. So I never yeah. really felt poor. Right. You know, my dad every day for lunch would have cat, you know, Poppy didn't charge anything. He would carry fat cash. stack of cash in a rubber band. Yep. Like it was embarrassing to me as a kid. Like I think it's cool <laughs> now, but I remember when I got braces, he goes, what are they going to cost me? He go, and he pulled out a stack of money with a rubber band around it. OG Italian way. And he always had extra rubber bands on his wrist in case one broke. Yep. So um, it was his bracelet, you know. That has to be an Italian thing. I don't know. Or maybe just like a drug dealer thing. <laughs> I don't know. But... Well, yeah, I don't think it was a drug dealer. <laughs> no, but... I mean, but I don't know. I guess the culture goes hand in hand. I don't know. <laughs> Everything was cash. So um, My dad did the same thing. But I remember like having lunch money on the counter every day for me. It was like whatever it was, $5 a day, $2 a day, whatever. And... It seems like so minor now, you know, then, but looking back, you know, they probably budgeted for my lunch money, you know, but yeah. I had it. Some kids didn't. I had, and my dad told me how to budget. Then he started giving me enough money for the week. And he would say, this is your money for the week. And I knew what I could eat for lunch. And like, he started drilling in me really young, pay yourself first, save, you know, things like that. Things I that, that I use every day that I passed on to you. Yeah. I used to always say, pay yourself first. Yeah. Even though he was a kid You're when I was born. always big on saving. Always big on saving. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they didn't, how did they even know to teach me that? Mimi taught me everything about love and compassion and um, like turn the other cheek, like all the way Baptist. Like you don't even Which hit, someone crazy. hits you, you don't hit back, you turn the other cheek. Which is that not the complete opposite of what Poppy would say? If someone hits you, wouldn't he tell you to punch him in the face? No, he would go do it for me because okay. he was the man. All right. No. He Fair. would say, who the fuck's her dad? Yeah. Like if somebody would hurt my the feelings. People don't know how some of those Poppy stories. Oh, yeah, no. No. <laughs> on vacation one time I started to turn into a woman and we were holding hands like I'd hold my dad's hand Mimi would hold the other and he goes the first motherfucker that says something to you too I'm bashing him with a brick and we were in oh we were in God. we were in Virginia Beach he does not play around no and my you know Mimi was like Please. by the way let's talk about his stature oh he was 5'3 <laughs> <laughs> he was a little guy. He did not give a fuck. Oh no, uh, he was. He did have the syndrome where he had to prove that he was tough. Yeah, he would. He could kill people, like you know, big guys. He, he could a, he, fight. It was a badass. So we're walking in Virginia Beach, and some guy goes, "Oh, you got two girls you want to share?" And, and Mimi goes, "Please, oh. no, 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 Terry." He turned around and went, "Bam!" And we ran. What did he do? Whacked him in the back with a brick. With a brick? Yeah, he had well, a brick you... hidden. He picked actually brought a brick with him? No, he picked it up off. After one guy said something inappropriate, he's like, the next motherfucker that says something, they're getting whacked. And he picked something up. <laughs> My gosh, what the hell? This man's crazy. I mean, it's, I mean, it's crazy. And then I'm not I don't even know if I knew that one. That, I grew up that's in that. Wild. But then I was raised by Mimi that to love everyone. Yeah. You know, and I know that's why I'm so sensitive today. Like, you mm -hmm. know, I get, you get mad at me because I get my feelings hurt so easily. True. You're like, you're fucking in business. Fuck them. You know, I just can't do that. I, I get hurt so bad because I love everyone and they're mean to me and I forgive and I do turn the other cheek. But Mimi taught me so much in life that makes me sad that she died the way she did. Yeah. Yeah. But I would go but, to feet washings. Go what? Feet washings. What are feet wash? Like you just go wash people's feet? So in the Baptist church, you know, Nanny and Pat were Baptist. It wasn't just Catholic, right? Uh -huh. Everyone thinks we're Catholic because I was a town, but I was half in Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah, they would go on church on Sundays and to like show humility and to be kind to others, you would just get on your knees and like people would, <laughs> it seems crazy, they would have their feet in little buckets and you would wash their feet for them just to be, show humility. Wow. Impressive. Serious. I believe you. It's just, it's, it's, but it's good. don't, it now you know me as my age, right? As a woman, can't, can't you see those like things in me? Like that was drilled in me when I was little. It really formed you into well, the person. Things like you are. that. I mean, that helps you be a great mom when you think about the things you have to do with a kid like Georgie, you know? Well, nothing uh, prepared me for that, but yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I think about that. Like that will humble you too, you know? 
Do you know how many people are in the waiting room waiting for Georgia to be born? Yeah, let's talk about that. Okay. Um, so you grow up, you had great parents, sounds like, right? So, yes. So high school, mm-hmm. um, I was smart. You know, when I think I got, of you in high school, all I think about is Tina every time that you say Tina high school. Tina my, my girl. So you Shout know, okay, so Tina, my, my cousin Tina. Cousin, not Cousin actually. because I'll tell you the story. So my mom got pregnant at 15. Mm-hmm. So did her best friend, Betty. Mm-hmm. What are the freaking odds of that? Right. So both at the same time, we don't know what was going on, but they got pregnant they like did. literally at the exact same time. I was born September 16th, Tina September 29th. Something weird was going on back then. I was going to be <laughs> Tina until my dad said, Oh my God, I think Betty's going to name Tina Tina. So my dad said, I'm going to put an Italian spin on it. And he named We'll talk about. Oh, no, no, never mind. That, that was after the fact. Steve so, and, and... Okay, so yeah. So Tina's born. Me and Tina literally l- slept in the same crib. Like, mm-hmm. honestly. You know, we were friends from birth. Like, I loved her sh- so much, you know? And um, I, and our parents put Coca-Cola in our baby bottles and smoked the whole time. But um, so Tina's born. My mom and dad get married. Betty gets married. And back then you get married. And Betty gets divorced. She has Tina and Danny. So I grew up, Tina and Danny were my brother and sister. Mm-hmm. And then they get divorced, and my mom goes, I'm going to fix her up with the Sedoti. So she fixed her up with Steve, and Steve marries Betty, and then they have Babe and AJ. So Tina really became, like, even though she was family, no matter what, but she really was family then because her stepdad was a right. Sedoti. Right, so. so then high school comes, um, and I got great grades, you know, I, you know, I was going to go to school. You know, the teachers would always tell my dad. But listen, Poppy was horrible. Like, I wasn't allowed. I didn't drink in high school. He, Everyone was scared to death of him. I was worried when a report card came yeah, out. they were afraid that he was going to hit him with a brick. <laughs> well, the first boy I did anything with, he went to his house and jacked him up and said, if I find out, even look at my daughter in the hallway, I'm going to kill you. Well, that'll do it. Then it was over. No yeah. more boys. <laughs> it was, and the boy knows exactly what it is. It was horrible. That's Horrible. funny. If that guy watches this, that will be the funniest Let shit ever. Let me tell you ever. a funny thing about him. I end up selling a house for him, for him and his wife, uh, I don't know, five years ago, whatever. And he sent me flowers to thank me. And I text him and I said, Terry Sedoti is turning in his grave right now, Joe. It's just funny. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so I'm like, my dad and I fought and I'm like, I'm going to be a flight attendant. Like, I'm not going to school. I'm, I want to be a flight attendant. I want to travel the world. I want to have a boyfriend in every state. So he made a deal with me. He said, you're going to go to Italy because I was going to go visit family in Italy. He made Mm -hmm. me stay there three months. I did not want to stay three months. I didn't want to leave my friends. And this is when there were no cell phones. Like, you couldn't – it was hundreds of dollars to call home. So I went and didn't talk to family every day. I was so homesick. I thought I was going to die. And then then my dad said, you got to stick it out. You're going to love this experience. It's going to mold you as a person. Travel is everything. You're going to meet friends, you know, whatever. And then – I didn't even want to come home when it was time to come home. So, except I got so fat, no one knew who I was. <laughs> Carbs. You know you don't understand. <laughs> Back then, what was it? What was it though? Like what food? There has to be a food that like you were eating every day. Like, I something. ate it all. I ate it all. <laughs> Zio, Zio Luigi. So when you go to Italy, this is a long time ago too. Yeah. Like they they serve courses and they don't tell you what all you're gonna eat. So I'm from America. You know we eat whatever spaghetti. We had pasta. I'm thinking we're done. Oh, no, 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 no. And they pull out this, and they pull out this, and they pull out this, and then the bread, and then we'd go get gelato every single night. So, With the brioche um, and all that. My my favorite thing to eat in Italy when I was there was the the greens, like the escarole with the olive oil. That ain't what got you fat. The, the big ginormous bread you ate it on did. It was like a freaking <laughs> loaf of bread. Um, so I fly home from Italy after three months. And back then you could go and meet your family. You don't have to go through security. Anyone could go into the airport. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> now, mind you, I was black from being in the sun every day. Uh-huh. My hair was really, really blonde. And my dad walks by, my little dad. I go, hey. He goes, oh, my God. Did you use a fork? Did you shovel it in? First sentence to me. <laughs> Swear in your life after three months. I wish gone. you got to have photos right after that because I. you always tell me the story. I and I don't remember. Burned them I gotta off. see how big you were. I will never show it. It was the anyone. biggest you ever were by far. 
bigger than I was. It was about the same when I was pregnant. Oh my gosh. As big as when you were pregnant? So you got to think, when I was in high school, I was always chubby. Like I wasn't thin. Tina was 90 pounds. I was like, I was always a size 10, 8 to 10. I'm like I'm a four now. So um, You were a 10? Yeah, I was an eight, eight, eight-ish. But looking back, I think I, as a woman, I was felt fatter than I really was. Looking back, I wasn't that fat. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I and so I probably gained, uh, maybe I say I weighed 150 then, I gained like 30 pounds. So it's like 180. Oh, and you're like 5'2"? I'm 5'4". Like, I'm like I like don't know if you're 5'4 now. anymore. I'm not that old to shrink. What are you talking I think you might have shrunk a little bit. No, I'm 5'4". I don't think so. Well, whatever, okay. 5'2 on a so, good day. Um, so then Poppy, so then here I am, right? Back home in the United States, you had to be, I don't remember now, um, 19 or 20 to be a flight attendant. So I told my dad, just let me see if I can be a flight attendant. So when I left, I was working at the Visitors and Convention Bureau, right? So um, I got, you know, I was state typist. Not everyone knows that I went to state. Second in the state in typing. I did get the gene. You did. I can, I, I think I can compete with you. You're still faster than me. But anyone that wants to challenge me to a typing test, I'm serious with challenge it. Challenge both of us. I'm serious with What's it. What's the prize? How about this? Any What's mother and son out there that wants to challenge us to a typing test? I think that's amazing. Bring it on. I, I really, I, I'm being dead ass serious. But you want to know something funny? Well, how you remind me of me sometimes. So when I was going to go, it was, I was going to Columbus, like the big city for my state championship. Tina was going. This is not a joke. She went to a state championship for typing. I don't know if it's still a thing in 2024. It's not. It might have been on a typewriter. So listen. Was it on a typewriter? Yes. It was actually on like a typewriter. Yes. Like not like a computer keyboard. Yes. I learned on a typewriter. Graduated 1985. So this is 1985? I don't don't remember the state competition. I think it was a typewriter, I think. Because we didn't really, computers just started coming out then. But here's the oh funny gosh, part. This is the so funny part. Crazy. Tina got to go. Like Tina's my side. She's my bestie, right? My sister. But why did she go? Like for support? She was like I in think the bleachers she drove watching. Us. She might have been like seventh runner up for like uh, interviewing technique or um, punctuality. What? <laughs> what is? What are these competitions you were in? That's why I'm crazy with business. That's why poor Liv, poor Liv gets the brunt of it because I'm like professionalism all the way. You know? Yeah. They don't so, even teach that shit here's anymore. The funny they part. should. You know, Madonna was in then. You know, Madonna was like just coming out. And I'm like, I'm going to the big city. I'm going to, I'm going to, this is a new me. I'm going to Columbus for the state <laughs> typing competition. This I'm going to be Madonna. So I wore like lace gloves. You're going to be Madonna? I can like dress up like that. Oh my, like, like this is something that people what? are going to see you, you do. Drew, you thought you were LeBron on the basketball That's court. That's basketball. This I was, was a, I was a very good Typing basketball player. Sport. Typing was my sport. So that's the same. <laughs> like that is a good equal comparison. I had people in the stands watching. How many people watched you? Like were there were there spectators? Did your dad come and root you on? Yeah, hit the space bar. Like how'd that go? I don't remember. Like punctuation, baby girl. Don't forget to hit the period. Like what do you say? I'm sure Poppy made so much fun of it. I don't know. He probably made fun of it. <laughs> Um, so you go as Madonna. And like I even wore like the floppy bow in my hair. Oh my gosh. Lace, lace gloves. Oh yeah. And, Did you take um, the gloves off? No, because you could type through them. You left the gloves on? That probably slowed you down. No. You might have got first. I didn't care. I was like, I was state competitor. How bad did you, like how far in front was the first, was it close? I don't remember. Oh, okay. I remember I typed 125 words a minute-ish. 125 words a minute on a typewriter. Did you have nails? I don't know. There was no fake nails then. Yeah, I know, but you, you think Poppy would let me have nails? I don't know. You're missing. I don't know. If, if you always get they your didn't nails have nails now. back then. Well, then, oh, then I started gluing nails on. That's another story. I lost a red nail in your own. All right, but John's let's finish this typing pop, story, though. Salad, I'm okay? on this. So, so you um, go as Madonna. You show up. Tina's with you. What does Tina do when you're there? Mary was with me. Mary but, and Lori. But what do they do while you're there? I don't remember. They had their own little competition. Lori went. I don't remember exactly. Lori might have went. So this for, is like a state. No, Tina went for. Calculator, calculator, <laughs> calculator speed. So we went for. Are you be, wait? Are you being serious right now? God. Cal- ten key, ten key. Calculator. You know who's speed. the you know who's the beast of that? You're on Angela. I know this, so am I. But they had competitions for this. It was professional. We were secretaries. You know, this is the '80s. We're going to be professional. Secretaries. I gotta, I gotta, we gotta fact check this, people. Like, what were the call com- out? Was it like Mary those- Smith? 
No, I just want to know. Carol. I want to know. This is new. We this gotta find Noel's footage. There's gonna be footage somewhere of, of like state typing tests and like calculator speed. This like makes me think of like Rubik's cube. Oh, like are the Rubik's cube people there? You have to understand it was a different time. When did in the life? Rubik's cube come was, out? This was a different time in life. Do you like, remember when the Rubik's cube came out? Uh, I don't remember. You don't remember. Uh-uh. It's probably the '90s, huh? I think so. I think early '90s. Yeah. But so this, I grew up in an era where women were going to be secretaries. Like I was in secretary class. I used to do shorthand. You know what that is? Shorthand. Learned a whole other language. No idea what that is. You would talk right now, and I, it was a, you'd read it. You wouldn't be able to read it unless you knew shorthand. It was a way, like there were symbols for long words and sentences. You've never heard of shorthand? Are you fucking with me? No! Oh my god! You really don't know what shorthand is? San Antonio, do you know what shorthand is? Google it. Google the shit. Yeah, this is why we need to bring it up on the TV. Shorthand. Yeah. There's no Mary, way I, I want to. We're gonna take a poll. That. We're gonna take a poll of how many of my followers know what shorthand is. Okay. I bet you. I bet you, it's less than twenty people out of thousands. Well, then you need to change your followers. <laughs> what do you mean? I need to change my <laughs> followers. <laughs> what do you, when do you use shorthand? That's like asking when you use calculus in real life. Like um. When you're a secretary and your boss, this is so funny because rules are just so changed. In your mind, then you visualize being a woman and with a male boss, and mm-hmm. he was going to dictate to you, "I want you to write a letter for me." And he would say, "You know, write it in shorthand." Yeah, dear Mrs. So and So, blah blah blah, and you'd go, well, "Okay." Give me an example, like, like is it like saying instead of property, saying that prop or like, what do you mean? um, cash, casual? No, like, can you Google the? There's symbols. There's not letters. Symbols. There's symbols. Like an and sign. Yeah. Like, That's yeah. shorthand. Yes, like but, an asterisk or like. But there was like symbols. A, for deer, whatever you call that. Deer at. was a symbol. Blah blah blah. The yeah. Wow, that you is didn't bizarre. write the word out. That is literally blowing my mind right now. You, honest to God, didn't know anything. Are you I, googling this? I don't. I don't. I don't even. Okay, let me see sh- that. Let me see. Let me see that. I don't even. I don't even think that. Uh, new kids now. Um, what the fuck let me see. is let me see if this? I can read it. Let me see if I can Did read you see it. this? Let me see. There if I can is read absolutely it. no way. Let me see. Dude, we gotta bring this up on the screen. This looks like what the fuck? Can we have a reunion? Oh here? my god! Yeah. Yes. You do not know what that is. I don't anymore, but I did. I don't is this anymore. not the most bizarre thing you ever heard right now? Yeah. I'm actually mind blown. I think the typing is like the shorthand's more. That is that's a whole different language. Yeah. Oh my god! Can you know you? what? Damn, Damn son. son. That's what I had to hear that. Guys, if you're watching my podcast and you think that you might be a good fit for my team, I am hiring salespeople. Yes, I'm hiring salespeople for Team AO People Made, where we sell life insurance and help protect families' futures. As you know, I'm big in sales, especially in the life insurance industry. We're able to help people and make significant incomes along the way. If you think you're a good fit, click the link in the description and request an interview or click the link in my bio and request an interview there. I look forward to talking to you. So I want to have a reunion here of 1985, like Mary, Lori, Mrs. Newell. So listen, let me tell you really quick, because Mrs. Newell taught me everything in life. Honestly. Shout out Mrs. Newell. Yes. So Mary and Lori. Well, she was your teacher what teacher? Uh, my typing teacher, my business teacher, everything. She yeah, taught us everything. typing teacher. She was like your trainer. She taught us professionalism, how to dress, how to act. So... <laughs> um, she lives in Columbus now, and I haven't seen her. And Lori and Marion went to visit her, and they FaceTimed me. No and way. They faced, I was walking out of the gym, and I started crying, and Mary goes, oh, hell, I knew she was going to start crying. <laughs> yeah, she's That's still funny. alive. That's funny. So. Okay, so um, because of my secretarial <laughs> classes, I got a job at the Erie County Visitors Bureau. Okay. So. No, this all matters, I'm sorry, right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is relevant. The whole concept, right, is it where people made. So, like, all these things Let matter. Let me tell you. They all this made you who you are. people made. So. Yeah. When I first off my parents and then Mrs. Newell, mm-hmm. but let me tell you who else is part of my story, and you don't even know if you know this. So I get a job at the Chamber of Commerce, not the Visitors Bureau. Okay. There was no Erie County Visitors Bureau. It's a tourism town, right? And I was secretary. Is Mike good? Is he good? Okay. And um, so Libby Karam started working there, who was Leslie Cantelli's mom. Okay. Libby okay. was uh, one of my bosses. She was there to found and start the Erie County Visitors Bureau. Okay. Um, so I, at like 17, was managing this, taking people on tours. I made up tours and took them all over the city and all this stuff, right? I was her secretary. Mm-hmm. So I said, listen, Libby, I'm going to Italy for three months. I'm not going to go to school. 
I'm going to come back and work until I'm old enough to apply to be a flight attendant. She goes, I want you to go experience life. It's going to make me cry. Libby taught me so much. Like I, I think about her all the time. Like her little high heels she would wear every day. She invented iced coffee. She would drink coffee on ice, and I used to think it was the grossest thing ever. <laughs> yeah, I bet to Wikipedia, this girl created iced coffee. Nobody, nobody drank iced coffee then. Mm-hmm. Um, and she had a husband. Um, oh, God, what was his name? He was Lebanese. Anyway, she goes, you go enjoy your time in Italy, and I'm going to save your job for you. I'm saving your job. So mind you, when I leave, this is how you got started, your life. I go to Italy where there's no cell phone, so I'm gone off the earth for three months. Libby is... Visitors and Convention Bureau Libby just founded it. I come back, and I'm like, I'm back from Italy, whatever. She goes, well, I got to I gotta sit down. I got to meet you and tell you something. While you're in Italy, I took a job at the Green Tree Inn, director of sales. George Sartino hired me to mm-hmm. run his sales office. But I told, and I, I'm like, am I not going to work with Libby? I was, like, devastated. She goes, but I told him, part of the package is you have to come work with me. Like, I'm not coming without Trina. I was 18 years old. Yeah, I graduated when I was 17, so I was 18. <clears throat> and, um, oh, I don't even know if I was 18 yet, maybe-ish. So I start working at the Green Tree Inn. Um, I was dating a little a boy named AJ Camilleri, nice Italian boy, I'm working at the Green Tree Inn, and um, for your dad and your grandpa. Mm-hmm. That's how I met your dad. So, you know, I start working banquets, and then um, I start dating daddy. And, but oh, this whole time, I'm, I'm applying for – in um. Airline jobs. Yeah, I want to hear about that. I want to hear about, I, I think it's interesting, like, how you explain, like, how the whole flight attendant gig worked. I so you're applying to, to all these different to all these. Well, I only flights. had two interviews. Okay, but you applied to all of them or a uh, whole I bunch? I applied. You had two oh, interviews? No, no, I had, I'm sorry. I had one interview. I knew I was going to get the job. So you got interviewed by who? TWA. What does that stand for? I don't know what the airline was back then. I forget. Transport you, Airlines. Okay. Okay. TWA. They sent me Is a Is this plane. like a spirit? Like no. a low class? No, it was, no, it was like, it was a, the biggest airline around at the time. Okay. And it really? Was, it was fifteen That's seventy-five an hour in 19, at this point it was like 1986 or 87. 16 bucks an hour back then? Yes. Oh, shoot. Fly for free, full benefits, everything, right? So I, this is how So you interviewed, I remember you've told me, you've but told I me. But I got a plane ticket, I went to Kansas City on an airplane, uh-huh. and they have to weigh you. Like you, I had to stand in line with, in my mind, I think it was 3,000 girls. Maybe it was 1,000. Sometimes your memory, I don't remember. Thousands yeah. of girls. It uh-huh. was like a meat market of all attractive. Because back then you had to be a certain weight and height and everything. To be a flight attendant. Yeah. It's like being a bottle girl. You, I had, <laughs> to, I had to stand on a scale, face the other way. I wasn't even allowed to see what my weight was. But mind you, Poppy was like all for me getting the job, right? You had to stand because, on a scale backwards? She goes, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a secret. I want you to take this with you. And the night before you go, drink this before you go to your interview just to oh make sure. Oh, my gosh. What was it? What was it? I'm embarrassed to even say. You haven't told me this. So you had to go. So I, You, you did this because you knew they were going to eat you knew they were, syrup. You knew they were going to uh, weigh, weigh you. Okay, so this is something. To, what is it? What do you make you take? Syrup of Ipecac. Oh, my gosh. I threw my guts up out the night before. If you don't know what syrup of Ipecac or however you pronounce it is, look that up. But wait, you want to Look know? up that. Just look that up on Google. You want me to tell you funny? That is wild. You didn't know this. You, I, did he warn you? Yes, but you want to know how he knew what it was? This is going to make my dad sound like a crazy person. He hated his boss, right? Oh, my gosh. So listen. Don't even say this. Want me to tell you? Oh, my god. I mean, this is real shit. <laughs> he only knew what it was because he wanted to torture his boss, I no, assume? because he wanted to throw up on his boss. Oh, my God. He took it himself? Yes. Oh my God! Are you hearing this? This yes. is crazy. Oh, Poppy got in trouble for keying his boss's car. So he car. knew what he, he wanted. Would, like, walk he didn't like put it in his coffee because he wanted him to get sick. No, he wanted to throw up in him. Did he do it? I think so. I don't remember. I think. Oh no! I don't think it affected him till later in the day, and at the timing didn't work out. <laughs> he got fucked up. Yeah. He thought that he was gonna yeah. puke on him. Couldn't puke. Chuck tell you. He I'll couldn't puke, and then he ended up probably puking his guts out the whole rest of the night. I swear to God. <laughs> Oh my gosh! What a savage! This guy so, should have been famous. So Pop, I'm you should alone, have been famous. I'm alone in a hotel room, right? Throwing up, like this is my dream job, okay? But I'm dating your dad, and you know at that point I was in love with. I love your dad, but I love the family more, honestly. Like I loved. I I'm gonna get emotional. Like I feel like I loved Zia, and Noni and Nanu. Just 
as much as I loved your dad, you know, and I loved working there in the hotel mm-hmm. and restaurant. Like I loved it. So I go and I'm in the phase. The phase one was in a conference room with thousands of girls mm-hmm. and they like called you out to answer questions and stuff. And then you had to go to phase two. Well, phase two, they didn't even make me go. I got the job. I knew I got uh-huh. the job, but I was waiting to get this letter in the mail to say I got it. Cause there was no internet then. Right. Yep. So I get, um, hi there. Can Arthur come, come in? in? Yeah. Hi. Hi, babe. What's up? Okay, so where are we at? Are you talking about you're in a, you're in okay, the, so what, like an auditorium, I'm in an auditorium, thousands of girls. You're going to be a flight attendant. And, um, this is I, literally like my friend just got hired at, um, at Live Nightclub in Vegas. And this literally sounds like like how it was for her. Really? Which is wild. I can't Flight attendants and bottle girls. It's I can't crazy. believe you're legally allowed to do that now. Crazy. So um, I, I knew I was going to get the job, but I was waiting to get the letter. And I got the letter that I got hired with TWA. And Poppy was so excited. Well, Poppy's all about himself, too, for sometimes. Like, he was happy. He was going to get free travel. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but then um, it was right around, like, Christmas time. And um, so then I, it was Christmas time. I went over to Noni and Nanu's. And it was back then when you had like video cameras, like they were like a television on your shoulder, right? right. And I was at Noni and Nanu's and everyone's like all oh, doing this preparation. I'm like, what Noni is going and Nanu's on? grandma and grandpa's. Yeah. yeah. And I'm looking and they're all waiting. I'm like, what is happening? And Nanu's filming. And then daddy gets on one knee and proposes to me. Oh, shit. So what am I going to take the flight attendant job or am I going to stay here and get married? Was that a plan just to keep you? Yeah. Yeah. He'll deny it all, whatever, but it's true, whatever. Um, Poppy was did not want me to get married. Like, he wanted me to be a flight Yeah, attendant. I think he wanted it because he wanted the flights. But, you know, he wanted the discounted but I was, flights. But honestly, though, <laughs> but you know what? He was right. Like, I love my life now, you know, obviously. But when you're – I was a young girl. I had no business getting married then. But he once – once I made the decision, like he went all in. He was supportive, you know, and paid mm-hmm. for my wedding and all that stuff. But um, it was sweet, the best grandpa ever. But it took him a while to get over that. Yeah. He wanted me to be a flight attendant. And in my mind, that's what I was thinking as a young girl. Like, fuck you. You just want the free travel. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he, now that I'm older, he was right. Yeah. You know? Like, what? That's the butterfly effect. Yeah, the butterfly effect. You wouldn't even be here. Butterfly effect's important. I think we're going to start talking about that with everyone that comes I on the show. I love the butterfly effect. Because I think it's so it's so true. You know, one little thing, you know. I mean, it, could, well, it's yeah. like whatever turn you take in life Matters. makes you like who you are. Littlest, you littlest wouldn't thing. be here if I would have taken the flight attendant job. Exactly. It's pretty crazy. So, um, so, so then, then you get married. Our wedding um, was like. Wedding was great. Some, no, and then, it and, was not just great. It was the most epic wedding I've so wedding was to, great, yes. okay, and then so uh, people, and then you have, then you decide to, that you're gonna try to have a baby. Yeah, because it was just the thing to do at that age. Of course, you get married to have a baby. How old were you when I you had my brother? I was nine months pregnant. Georgia was born on my birthday. Which what? You, I turned how old were you? Wait, I forget now. I turned. It was, he was born in ninety. Georgia was born. He turned twenty three. Did I? Born in ninety. Okay, yeah. So you turned twenty three, and that's yeah. something I want to touch on because I don't think a lot of people, a lot of people, just see you. Um, you know, they see you on billboards, oh, they see you on Facebook, and they, they, they might see some post, right, um, of Georgie, but they don't necessarily know, you know, the extent <laughs> of everything, and uh, I think it's obviously, we talk about everyone being people made, I think it's probably what had the biggest impact on you as a person. I think it'd be hard to say no. But no, but I, I also don't think, think it did. I also think, uh, I mean, I would say it probably on me and who I am today, it probably had the biggest impact. Um, but just, if you don't mind, I mean, share what that's, share what that was like. Like you're in the, you're in the hospital, you're expecting a completely normal pregnancy, no? Well, I, so normal normal that uh, when I was pregnant, there's this book. I don't know what you call that. I know every mother has read this book. Normal delivery is probably the word. Normal delivery. Because I had a book, what to expect when you're expecting. Mm -hmm. And there was chapters on C-section and trauma. I literally, I'm like, that's not going to happen to me. Boom, boom. I didn't even read those chapters. Swear to God. Because, you know, you're young. You think you're, everything's going to be healthy and normal. Mm. So um, at this point, it was the first grandbaby on, baby on both sides. And we were working at the hotel and restaurant. So those people were our family. You know, they were like 
hundred people working there that were waiting for Giorgio to be born. Well, was Allie born or no? Allie, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, he was the grandson. He wasn't the, I forgot yeah. Allie was born, yeah. Shout out to Allie. She yeah. was, so was going to see this and say something. I know, so. Allie, I'm sorry. She knows yeah. I love her. I was obsessed yeah. with her. She knows. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so I go. I'm working a banquet. I worked till I was nine months pregnant. Mm. And I used to fake I was in labor all the time, you know, joking around. So I go, I think I'm literally in labor. And Mike's like, no, you fuck, you're not in labor. You're just joking, whatever. He's working a banquet. And I go, I'm going to just drive to my mom and dad's. Just see if I am. And I drove to Castelia and I go, and I had I was having back labor, and my mom goes, Oh Jesus, you know, Mimi. We gotta get her to the hospital, whatever. So I go to the hospital, and then daddy came when he was done working. Like right, it wasn't like I didn't wait long and yeah, yeah. that negatively. And um, so right away I was having trouble. And I thought I just didn't know how to have a baby. Honestly, I'm, i just told the doctor, like, can you just do a C-section? Like, I thought I didn't know how to push. He goes, Oh, I, he goes, I can't push a I can't see section every girl that doesn't know how to push a baby out in an hour. Verbatim is what he said. So Poppy was like getting pissed. And um, he goes, I'm going to numb you and try forceps. So they numb me from the waist down. I had to sit up and have a spinal thing up my back. And then they tried forceps. That's why Giorgio had like black eyes and his head was all messed up. And that didn't work. So then they just, you know, I had a, a C section. And then when he came out, I, I thought everything's good. You know, I'm like, who's going to think something's wrong with your baby, you know? Back mm-hmm. then, there wasn't autism or anything. And um, it was kind of clear that that he wasn't doing well. I still think he's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. But there were 74 people in the waiting room waiting for George. Wow. 74. I counted every... I laid there for four days because I had a C-section. They life-flighted him. So then everyone goes home, and I have to stay in the hospital. And then they come and they say, Trina, you know, George is not doing really well. We think you need to call in the priest. What? Like I was Whoa. by myself in a ro- in a hospital room, so I call your dad. I'm like, you know, and we still didn't think anything, you know. So they call the priest and they they bless him and then they life flight him to Toledo because he had like severe brain damage. So I mean, if they bring the priest in, what does that usually mean? That he's gonna die. Yeah. So they life flight him and he goes to Toledo, and that was awful for me. That's crazy. I had to like recover from a C-section, mm-hmm. and um. So I would have to, like, walk the hall, you know, holding a rail. Are you mm-hmm. going to cry? I might. <laughs> um, I had to walk because everyone left me because they I wanted, they all went to Toledo to sit with Giorgio, you know. So I was by myself. And um, I would walk to, like, recover. And I'd have to walk by hospital rooms with people with their baby. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember telling the hospital, I go, you guys should have moved me. Like, going forward, I wasn't mad. I'm like, for other mothers, you should move them to a different wing because it was torture. So then, you know, I get released. I go up to Toledo, and he was there a month. And then when a baby's born with a brain injury, they don't know, you know. So pot, it's not you know, like a diagnosis. Just no, you have there's brain no damage. like. Here's your baby. <clears throat> he might be in a wheelchair. He might be what handicapped. We don't you know. Have no idea. So I remember so every day that was guess. my first job in my life that I knew. I'm. I'm. This is my. This is my job. I told your dad. I'm like. I'm not going back to work. I'm gonna read everything I can. This is my job. Mm-hmm. So I remember I read that Rosemary loves a story for, for some reason. So back then, my kitchen had like um, these. Do you ever have these when you were like, because we, we grew up with like head kids at the same time. Pasta, different pastas and different cheeses. It was trimmed in green, white, and red. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. So I, I had these. everything with Roman. <laughs> huh? But it was like photos, like big pictures in my kitchen. It was a. Cheeses and, oh, and yeah, pasta. Yeah, okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, okay, yes. I think I know what you're talking about. So I had to like entertain myself every day. We had one car. Daddy mm-hmm. would take the car to work and I would stay home with Georgie. So, and I, re- I remember reading that to look the baby in the eye to make them confident, um, stimulate them, constant stimulation. So that was my job every day. And I would run out of things to do. So I would sit him in the kitchen and I would say, <laughs> penne, parmesan. Like I would just, talk every minute all day long in his face and I remember he would finally take a nap and I would eat peanut butter toast and watch Regis and Kathy Lee was like my moment to like have that's when he was like just born like he was a newborn uh, yeah yeah and um and then that then you know then it then that's it yeah and then George's life yeah and it's crazy though because you know number one I think it's you know no one expects that to happen but if we I don't know if we even if we can be honest like right it was a malpractice issue, no? Yeah. So the well, but you know, 
I, I think it was, but you know, it was now there's autism and he has so many characteristics of autism. Who knows? I mean, yeah, the doctor was, the doctor didn't, well, here's a funny story. Never now that you know my baby, dad's no? crazy. So the doctor was, I think, scared to death, you know, of my dad and your family had this reputation and when it wasn't true, but people had this reputation that they would get killed or something. Mm -hmm. So the doctor left town when Giorgio was six months, he moved away. So crazy and it's good because I, I seriously think but so we didn't know georgia was going to be handicapped honestly so mm. i thought like and i felt you this, didn't know what extent you had no, no idea but i you know you know i love noni so and crazy. nanu and i love i love everyone but so i felt crazy. like i was alone in a handicapped bubble this is why i want to write a book because mm. i was alone you should here. i think this is i was here noni and nanu i think they felt i could fix him like punishment <sighs> and routine and you know could fix him Poppy cried every single day, all day. I didn't even, someone didn't want Poppy around because he was just so sad and devastated. And daddy just worked all the time. So I was alone with this little human that I had to like raise to be. And I felt like I had to motivate everyone around me. Like I had to make them happy, you know? So then he walked on time. So I'm like, okay, he's not going to be in a wheelchair. Oh, he did? About on time. Like, really? Yeah. Like, yeah. I didn't know that part. Um, the How it became apparent that he was going to be handicapped. He didn't was, talk, right? It was um, motor skills, like sucking from a straw. Like I'll never forget working with him every day to suck from a straw. I would get Capri Suns and squeeze mm -hmm. them to help him. And he like, couldn't do it. No, no, no. So I remember the day, the day he could suck from a straw was like profound for me. Wow. I think you might have been born because so I remember crazy. you. So you would have been four. Yes, he would have been pizza four years old. High chair. Well, he oh. didn't talk till he was how old? Four, right? Wasn't it like a long time? Yeah, it was a long time. Like four years old? So that's when it became apparent that... And his first word was what? Do you remember? It was baby? Jojo. Jojo. No, no, no. That was, um, that was another... It was baby. So I thought. Oh, yeah. He loved you. In my belly, yeah. he would kiss my belly and call... you. We called you baby for like six years. I remember. No one was just so mad at him. Yeah. I remember. That's all I could say, baby. Because I said, this is your baby in, your, in the belly. And he would kiss you every night. And he loved you so yeah, much. Yeah, I remember. I remember he'd call... He wouldn't... He still struggles to say my name a little bit, but... um. You know, I remember he'd always call me baby. Yeah. Yep. Crazy. Crazy. When I think about that, you know, I, I just, I, I think just it's such an important, it. oh, for sure. And I, I think it's, uh, but, you know, you did. I think, uh, but I just think it's, people, it's important people to know that about you. I mean, I don't, I feel like people don't realize that or don't know what all that takes. I don't think people have any idea, like, you know. So I'll share this. Just happened yesterday. I didn't tell you this shit, babe. One of my clients, this is amazing, came to me yesterday and gave me a flower arrangement and a card. I sold her house, um, and they bought a house for me, whatever. And she goes, can I talk to you for a minute? This is yesterday. And I said, yeah, like, I don't know what she wanted to tell me. And she starts crying. And I don't care if she sees this, because it was, it was an amazing moment. She goes, I just want to thank you so much for helping me, and I want to apologize to you. I'm like, for what? She goes, I didn't like you. She goes, I didn't know you, but I didn't like you. Maybe because of, you know, what people say or think, because, you know, you look or act a certain way. She goes, and I didn't know what an amazing person you are. And it hurts my soul to know that I was not liking you for no reason at all. And I just want to give this gesture to you to tell you I'm so sorry and to thank you so much. How nice was that? Super nice. I mean, that takes a pretty I know, person it was so to nice. say that. Yeah, like I'm on a billboard, but in the morning I have a special brush. I still scrub Georgie's underwear. Yeah, exactly. You know? I, I just don't think people realize that part, that part of... of life. I mean, it's so important. People probably thought we were going to get on here and just talk all about business and money and, and all the fancy shit we like and, and what we do. But the reality is all that, we wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for, we wouldn't, if it wasn't for who we are as people. So all this stuff matters, Listen, you know? I used to take a hundred bucks out of my child support that I got. Now, mind you, daddy, daddy didn't own anything, right? Nanu did. I didn't give much. Yeah. What's not much? What was child support a month? I got to remember I want to say maybe he's gonna call you out. If they need maybe to. generously, seven hundred a month. Maybe total. Yeah, for both of us. Yes. Yeah. See, people I had no idea. That's yeah. so fucking crazy. And I was making thirty thousand dollars a year as yeah. a secretary. When I got a secretary job, I interviewed for it, and they said, "You know how to work a dictaphone, right?" You know. A dictaphone. What was the other word we used? Let's ask Arthur about that. Babe, do you know what um, shorthand is? Right. No one has heard of shorthand. I bet we're gonna ask everybody. I bet you. 
I bet you less than, what I say last time, 20? I'm, I'm, I might say less than 10 people that follow me. You should also ask if they know about pay phones. Yeah. Shorthand. <laughs> What the? I looked up shorthand. It looks like gibberish. So what's this other thing? A dictaphone? Okay, so I interview. Like, I'm getting divorced from daddy. Uh -huh. And I need a job. Yeah. Um, and honestly, the saddest thing to me, this is awful to admit, but I'm going to admit it. Not sad. It's the scariest thing for me about getting divorced is I wanted to work in the rest. I missed. The, I'm like, what am I going to do with my life? Like, you would, when you guys were babies, by 10 a.m., I was bored to death. I'm, mm -hmm. I wasn't a sit around. I'd take you in a playpen and put you in the restaurant and go to work because I wanted something to do. Mm -hmm. So I interviewed for this job and they said, you know how to use a dictaphone, right? I go, yeah. I had no idea what that like dictaphone what was. What is an addictophone? So you had to like push a pedal over here. <laughs> there, this is typing. I have a typewriter. Okay. And I had to push a pedal. Pull that up. We pull that up on an addictophone. And um, the attorneys would go to hearings and, and videotape on a little recorder, a cassette tape. The, the hearings and I would take the listen on a headset and listen to the attorney talking and type it up what, and this pedal this controlled, controlled the, 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 yes, what you heard in your yes, yes, yes. oh my gosh we are getting education yeah oh let me see please please when we, when they're watching this pull this photo let me up. see because it looks like it's from 1915 let me see <laughs> that was me this looks like it's from 1915. That's so funny. I know what it looks like. <laughs> that is the most ridiculous so I, thing I've ever seen in my so life. I have a question for you to ask your mom. Okay. So now ask her how she really handled that. What was her skill set that she could use the dictaphone? On we already talked about. Oh yeah, typing. we talked about yeah. all the typing. We <laughs> talked about. Chance. We talked about the whole typing. Trust me. You wait till you see it. Trust me. There's a whole part of this thing about right. typing. Sorry, it's I'm ridiculous. Sure. It's okay. No, it's perfect. That's so, yeah. an addictophone. So I'm getting an, I'm getting a whole education so about old school. You don't know this yeah. stuff about my life. Yeah. So when I would get my child support, um, I was like weird about it. Like I felt like I had to spend it on you. Like I wasn't, you know, and it was easy to do, right? My rent was eight hundred a month, I think. Um, so I would at, pick, take a hundred dollars. Village or where? Yeah, Shaker Village. I yeah. would take a hundred dollars and I'd put it in the bank envelope, and I'd put it in my door. Okay. And I never let you guys know, like you and your friends, but that was my hundred bucks was for the weekend. So we would budget Blockbuster, you know, every Friday remember we go to Blockbuster yep. and get games or movies and pizza or whatever we wanted for the weekend. It was that was our stash money. Yeah. For fun. Remember I make the couch into a, a bed and we'd watch movies in the living room? Yep, I remember. What was the other one? Family video. Yeah, yeah family, family video, video. yeah. I used to hope that we went to Family Video because they had an adult section, <laughs> and I, I would I would look under the door and try to get a glimpse of some titties or something. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They had a door, a swinging door. I'll never forget. And I'd be acting like I'm looking at the movies next to the door. <laughs> so obvious when I think about it. Just trying to peek and see something. <laughs> <laughs> but Blockbuster didn't have it, I don't think. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But Family Video had a whole I section. I Blockbuster did. I remember. I remember. I used to hope we went to Family Video. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's crazy. Budgeting 100 so bucks then, for the weekend. Um, where was I? I was working in a law firm. Then I worked in a marina. And then... Before we get too deep, though, I do. I know I mentioned this to Arthur like what a couple weeks ago. Um, you know, not to get corny or sappy, but like I truly am grateful that even with the experience you had with my brother, that you still chose to, you know, even give it another shot to have another baby because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that. So, so you want me to tell you I the truth I think about, about this, that maybe very, very this. often, you know, very so, often. So let me tell you. I mean, you know, I love daddy. Like, I love him like a brother. But I knew our marriage wasn't going to make it. I mean, we were kids with a handicapped baby. It was going to make me cry. And I'm sorry. And, um. I remember thinking, I'm not going to have kids with multiple men. Like, that was just, I'm not going to have, no disrespect to anybody that has multiple baby dads at all. But I'm like, I wanted Georgia to have a biological brother or sibling because he's handicapped, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm going to stick this out, and I'm going to have another baby, I swear to God, and he's going to be the fucking shit. Like, <laughs> seriously. Like, I got this one chance. And um, this next baby is going to be, like, amazing. So um, I, we get pregnant. Daddy did not want to have a second kid. Like I, I couldn't imagine. I mean, I, I, I think it's was scared. difficult. Yeah, you know, for sure. Scared. I would be. And so the doctor said, you know, I go, I'm, I want a C-section planned. He goes, Trina, it was, and I loved the doc, my doctor I had at the time then. 
he goes, I think you you don't have to have a C-section. I go, I'm scared to death. I said, let, let's, let me make a deal with you. I want to just pray about it. And if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. He goes, all right. He goes, I'm going to schedule a C-section date. And if you go into labor before then, you try to have it natural. If you go to the date, you're going to have a C-section. Well, I went to December 28th and I had a C-section. So it was like meant from God, right? December and, 28th. Um, so I got gypped on Christmas presents, but that's besides the point. Okay. Yeah. You're really gypped. Uh, I was, I was though. Okay, you've never been gypped at anything ever. Oh, I would get a present and it'd be for both. Let's not talk about it. We can get into it. We can get into it. I'm not saying I wasn't taken care of. Of course, I was very blessed. That's what babies get gypped. I was blessed. I got gypped though. I mean, I would have been, I was blessed. I would have been double blessed. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, that's true. Uh, so, um, so I go in to have a C section, a major surgery, right? So, um, and it was funny because I went in. And they said, don't wear makeup. You can't have nail polish on. I'm like, <laughs> I'm coming in the hospital decked out. I'm having my baby. Like, I was having my king, I felt like. And um, so I have a C-section, and then they come to take the baby because it's major surgery back then. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you're not taking my baby. Like, I waited. I want my baby's healthy and normal, and I was so happy. And so they, you stayed in my room. I'd make myself get up to like bathe you. You had your little um, widow's peak, little hair. Like yeah. I was obsessed. <laughs> and then I started reading about, you know, how to make kids successful or whatever, you know. And it was just like telling you you're going to be amazing. I used to, every time when I zip your coat up, I'd say, you're going to be an amazing, amazing businessman. I thought you were going to be an attorney. Remember that? We'd fight about that in high <laughs> yeah. school. I, want you I think it's all, this is all so cool here. Just because when I think about it right now, um, I think about like if you didn't have such a learning lesson with Giorgio, who knows if you would have been a right. different mother to me. Who knows? And who knows how it turned out. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's it really is amazing how it turned out. Yeah. Um, yeah, so then um, then you were born. And, you know, the funny thing, you know, how your name came about. So, you know, I had the name Giorgio. So people don't know, you know, your grandpa's Giorgio. I didn't have yeah. a choice. Yep. Um, so then when I got pregnant and I was having a boy, I told my dad, I told Poppy, you can name him. It's your turn now. Nanu mm -hmm. named you. So every day, you know, Poppy I mean, was... Nanu named Giorgio. No, of course, because yeah, Giorgio, yeah, Giorgio. Yeah. And then I told my dad he can name you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Poppy wore, like, girl jeans. Yeah, I know this. He really did wear girl jeans. Yeah, because he was so little. So little. Yeah. He would have little... Po he did wear girl jeans. Literally. Trying to figure out what girl jeans were. The zipper's on the opposite side. And I used to say to him, I go, are you wearing girls' jeans? They're Express. Express didn't carry male clothes then. And he would have um, <laughs> post-it notes everywhere all over. He'd come in in his tight pocket and he'd pull out names. So our whole kitchen table was like Italian names. I watched, um, what, did he, what was it? Uh, Bronx Tale. I got some good names from Bronx Tale. And he'd had, we had Santino, Pasquale. I wanted something ridiculous like Pasquale. And then we all agreed on Salvatore. Pasquale. That's, My I name was I Pasquale. Wanted Vito. I wanted Vito, Luigi, or Pasquale. I wanted something like ridiculous. <laughs> But we agreed on Sal. And then I think people probably don't know your middle names after your grandpa, too. Yeah. Vane, Vane is Vane. Vane Enterprises. Your great grandpa. All the companies. Yeah. It's my middle name. Yeah, my great grandpa on my pop side. Yeah. Yep. So um, that's how we got your name. And then I just knew you were going to be amazing. But then you were like, a few of those years of your life, you were a dick. Like, unbearable. Oh my gosh. You see how animated she is? It'd be okay if she said, like, you were a dick. But she has to go, you were a dick. Yeah. Every mother, every mother oh. understands. Oh. This is crazy. Could you imagine him at like 12 and 13? What about me? Yeah, I mean, I was, I mean. Your communication was unbelievable. I, I called you Who Joe do Pesci. we blame? Who do we blame <laughs> when you're a child? Who gets the blame for communication skills? I'm just asking. That's Who gets the blame? Yeah, I know. Okay, all right. But most little kids can't mimic exactly. You were exactly me and your dad, I guess. Like your the dad. Worst, more, your the dad worst more. is when I knocked my teeth out and I had the, the the dentist. I knocked my teeth out and the dentist somehow convinced. Your dad. Because the, the, the dentist assistant was a hot blonde and daddy would tell you this. <laughs> so if you're a dentist, get a hot blonde, uh, I guess, secretary. They can convince you to just buy veneers. I had two veneers. The rest of my teeth were a bait. Like, I had a little. I had not the nicest teeth, okay? They were decent, not bad. But 
my front two were perfect, huge. They look like buckets. veneers, huge veneers. We're gonna we gotta find a photo so to Daddy put on the screen because it is ridiculous. It, it was Daddy, ridiculous. I know. It lasted a year, and we're like, no, this has to change. I know, Daddy liked it. I it didn't even I, last a year, like six months. No, you had them longer than that. I don't think so. Did I, I took you in and changed them because it, they were embarrassing. They were so it was a bad. Chiclet. It looked like you had chiclets. And now we have all veneers. How about that? Yeah, <laughs> it looked like you had chiclet teeth right there. Yeah, you busted your so teeth out. So funny, so funny. But uh, so I was a little dickhead when I was 12 or 13. So much so, I want to tell a story about this. Guys, you know I tell you how important it is to find real estate deals off market. The biggest resource that helped me from the beginning to this day is PropStream. PropStream is going to give you so many tools and resources to help you find deals off market. I'm talking about data, I'm talking about systems, I'm talking about everything you need in one place. Click the link in the description or in my bio for PropStream to get yourself a seven day free trial. Every day during that seven day free trial, my team is gonna be giving you a complimentary webinar explaining all the benefits to this software. You do not want to start investing in real estate, especially trying to find off-market deals without PropStream. Click the links. You're telling, I, I want to tell a story that might out, paint the picture of my, uh, my little bit of my cocky attitude in my phase when I was like 12. I was older than that, I think. I think I was like 14 at this point. When you're driving me home from like basketball practice, we pull into the neighborhood, and you're so, you say something like, if you're gonna have that attitude, then just get the fuck out of the car or something, right? I didn't say that like that. Oh my way, gosh, I'm sure. my, yes, it was. She just doesn't realize. Okay, okay. yes, it was. Well, maybe. A whole hundred percent. Like okay. she doesn't remember throwing uh, anything okay. in my face either when I was a kid. Five, there's five. Oh things no, I'm not no, proud we don't need of. to elaborate. We got. We're on a time limit. Okay, go. It's your show. It's um, your show. So we're driving over basketball practice. She tells me to get the fuck out of the car for some reason while she's driving. Right, and me thinking that I'm Mr. Superhero decided what I decided to do. You go, I'm jumping out of the car right now. You wouldn't cuss then. Like I can't believe you didn't cuss then. You cussed once, but not then. But. So I decided to jump out of the car, thinking I'm Tom I'm Cruise driving. in Mission Impossible. So I jump out of the car. Halfway through jumping out of the car, I realized that probably wasn't a good idea, and I had flip flops on. Never get it, because obviously my my basketball shoes are in the bag. I got flip-flops on. Like slides. Yeah. So I jump out, and as I jump out, I realize this is not a good idea, and I catch on to the car door, and my toes are being dragged on the cement, and my mom is I'm laughing, laughing, laughing so, so hard. hard. She doesn't even think, I better stop before this kid's Fuck feet no. get fucked I was up. Letting, I was dragging your ass. <laughs> she dragged me all the way home and then pulled <laughs> in the driveway like it was normal, and I'm just like, ah! Screaming. If you could have seen your face too, like <laughs> over here hanging was, out. I had the to door. be crying. No, you weren't crying. I wasn't crying. No, you were way too proud to cry. Oh my god. You might have cried when you got I home. had to say the meanest face, things your after face that. Looked like Joe, you look like a little mobster your whole entire life. What are you about to say? I, my, I Joe look, Pesci. <laughs> I was gonna say that, remember? That's what I that call she was him gonna Joe call Pesci. me Joe Pesci. Yep. Uh, you, would, you would say things like, What are you talk like I don't have any homework to do? What do you mean my homework's all done? Like the only thing missing was the F word when you were little. Like your whole body was just like I said shirt. it without saying it right <laughs> oh that's yeah. funny but hey it's all right I turned out all right so you didn't did a good job I mean that's so true like I was worried at a moment in life I remember talking to daddy saying I don't know if I like him like I love him I don't know if I'm gonna like him honestly like you were you were a challenge well, thank god that changed because I always talk about likability being one of the most important things in business I mean it's true though I feel like any parent out there should remember you get over those phases you do yeah well most people do but not always I mean I took my job raising you very serious like not I always though go to bed certain time get up certain time you're not missing school you do this like things you hated about me I hope you appreciate now because it made you oh yeah for sure I do I do um all right so let's fast forward again so now I'm in college. You're working at Ohio Business College. You're a part-time real estate agent, right? I think a lot of people probably know you as this hotshot realtor, right? What got you into real estate in the first place? What okay. made you get your real estate license? So I was working at Ohio Business College, and I could take classes for free. Mm -hmm. And um, a few people throughout my years of life said, you should get into real estate or whatever, you know. I knew nothing about real estate. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I was teetering on taking the classes, but the defining, the butterfly effect moment for me was, I don't know if it's butterfly effect, but I was at Noni and Anu's for a party. Mm-hmm. We, I was divorced from daddy. You know, we still stayed close. I was there for a party. And there was like a couple hundred people there. Mm-hmm. And I remember looking around thinking, there's not one realtor in this party. So this is my sphere. Which would change today. Now that party would probably have six. There's a realtor at every corner, by the way. But right. go ahead. So um, I'm like, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm getting my real estate license. So I was raised to your person of your word. So if I would verbalize something, I would have to do it. So um, I went home, put a note in the fridge, and I took my real estate classes. I took two of them and waited 10 years to take the other two. I remember that. So, um, because my certificates were going to expire. So, and then I I took my classes, and then remember it was wintertime. I took off vacation from Ohio Business College. The first house on Sycamore. On Sycamore. I remember you studying for your test. I wrapped up in a blanket. I was in, like, what, seventh, eighth grade, maybe? It was in 2010. I was in high school, yeah. Um, no, I might have been in eighth grade. I don't, I don't remember. Seventh, eighth grade. So, um, yeah, I, st- I wrapped up in a blanket and studied all these Kramer courses, and I was, like, determined I was going to pass them the first time, and I got, like, a 96 or 94, I don't remember. I got my real estate license. Um, my first year, <laughs> I made... I don't know if I took home 25 grand, if it was gross or net. I don't know if I was on a terrible split, you know, Um but it was twenty five grand ish. And you're making decent money. What were you doing at Ohio Business College? How much money were you making? Um, at that moment, maybe forty. Forty, and you made. I made. You, I, when I left there, I was making like fifty five. I think. Right, but ish. you made forty. Your first year, you made made like twenty grand. So you made fifty percent of your salary. You probably were so excited. It was like it was extra did money for feel, my kids. Did you feel? Like, oh, this is it, or no, not yet. No, because at that moment you were not graduated yet, and I was still in mom mode. Mm-hmm. You no, know, I mean I. Which is crazy. Cause I think you definitely, once mom mode went away, is when you really turned up. When I think about it, because I think it was. So I'm in college. I drop out. You know, I drop out. I come home. Um, make a long story short, I end up getting my real estate license. Um, and right before I passed my test, you had. I remember you calling me. And having conversations with me, I swear, I swear on everything. I remember this. I mean, people need to know you've been my best friend. Like I pretend you weren't my best friend for years because you don't can't be friends with your kid until they're <clears> adults. But you, I went to you for so much guidance because which is crazy when I, I think feel about like it. you, like this is gonna make me cry. But you know, when Poppy died, you were who I cared about. Like your opinion of me, you know what I mean? So, gosh, but I cool. just remember specifically you struggling with the decision to quit Ohio Business College. We were making fifty thousand dollars I remember a week. what you told me. What I tell you, I don't remember this. So I didn't want to quit. Because I got medical benefits. And you said, you are believing this American dream bullshit that you have to work for medical benefits. You are working for medical benefits. You're going to make so much, it's not going to matter. Yep. And then I'm like, I'm doing it. And I just. I remember I when it. you did it. It was such it was a big deal. I remember you were so nervous too. And I thought, but it was I crazy. made, I think the year I quit, I made nearly 150 grand or maybe 100. Mm-hmm. So it was enough for me to know that even if you didn't have. Your... Right, that I'm like, but it's a commission job. You know, I was a single girl or whatever, you yeah. know. So, I, uh, you know, I'm like, I had to, like, worry about my salary. And it was the best thing I ever did. Best thing I ever did. And then uh, I got my real estate license. We became a mother and son team working out of Perkins Ave. Um, that, we should have filmed that. I know. That and, was every day. But the, the whole reason I got my real estate license, though, was just because I wanted to own a real estate brokerage. I knew that from day one, like, even before I got my real estate license, right? Um and did you buy your rental then? I already had a rent. I already oh, had flipping. a rental. I already had the flip. Did you? Do they know the the flip story? Yeah, they can. They can look up all that. They'll see all that in my my. Because that's pretty amazing. But uh, but yeah. So then we started the mother and son team together for a whole year. And then he was. It was a mentorship program. Like you're gonna be by to my be a side realtor. for Horrible. a year. I was like, I'm not doing this shit. I'm like, I got. We just gotta. We got to get into no. the business side of this because this is horrible. I got to go what, put no, the it was, sign it was, up? No, it was when my mom said, no, as, I put up all the signs. You, you go, I'm the not sign? your little bitch. We fought every day. Yeah, because I wasn't. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. And then, um, and then, but when I thought about it, I'm like, yeah, number one, that turned me off. But first off, now you got me thinking about stories. There's too many to share. But the worst one is when I just got my real estate license, we have different philosophies a little bit sometimes in sales. She's super successful in her own way. 
you might say I'm super successful in what I do. Um, but uh, sometimes we have our own way of doing things. Specifically, when I got my real estate license, and the first idea she had was <laughs> that I have to wear a name tag. She said, we're going to wear name tags. Yeah, I was in a seminar. Hold on, hold on. I'm, let me tell my version. I'll, immediately, this is when I knew. I'm like, oh, we're in for a bumpy ride here. When she said... Got my license. Boom. I surprised through like pass my test. Yeah, I didn't even yada, know yada, 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 yada. Passed my first try. Um, and uh, she said, We're going to wear name tags everywhere we go that says we're a realtor. And I remember vividly saying, I'm not wearing a name tag. And I'm not exaggerating. I swear she thinks I'm exaggerating when I say this sometimes. She said, Well, then you're not going to be a good realtor. Right? And I was like, well, here we go. Just like that. You hear how animated she gets? Just like that. You're not, I can already see her how she does with her teeth like this. You're not going to be a good realtor. I said, then you're not going to be successful. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when I said it. And I was like, holy shit, here we go. Uh, but yeah. But so that's I, because I believe that when you become a realtor, Everywhere you go, every second of the day, people need to know you're a realtor. That's why I'm successful. So for sure, for sure. We're going to get into that, that a little bit. But So we became a mother and son team. We then buy the brokerage that we worked that we worked for. You talked me into all that. Like, I yep. didn't want to do that. Yep, so we did that. It's funny when I think about it because it was me, you. How old were you then when we negotiated that like 24 purchase. maybe. But we had, like, I owned 35%, you owned 35%, and then we had another partner that owned 30%. You couldn't man, stand there. Man, that guy fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, so... Long story short, we started that together and then wanted to get in the mortgage business, so I sold my my piece back, um, sold my piece back uh, to you. Um, well, people need to understand, like, there's con they, there can be conflict when you own a mortgage company and a realtor at the same time. Yeah, for sure, but also, like, we can be transparent. Like, the brokerage business, in my opinion, is not all what it cracks up to be. We had a significant amount of agents doing pretty good volume. You're just really not making that much money. It's too competitive, you know? It's a very competitive business. You got you make a lot of money as a real estate agent, commissions and whatnot. But when it comes to the brokerage model, there's cloud-based brokerages. Like you got all this work, and you're working off of this much of a margin. And every day, someone can just come grab your agent and, and give them a hundred percent commission split. So that, was that, but that's besides the point. The real story is, that, you know, there's red tape with the mortgage thing. So I wanted to get in the mortgage business. So um, again, if people want to hear more about my story, they can they can watch, look up my stuff. But um, so then you got this brokerage. Uh, and that's really, in my eyes, it's funny because I kind of went my way at that point. You kind of took lead with everything, your side. And I, we t I talked to you about this earlier. To me, from my point of view, I don't know if you feel that, I feel like from that point on, like that moment is when really think we both started to go like this at the exact same time. And it's really cool to think, you know, you weren't this baller person, this baller businesswoman um, I still don't feel like I am. Until, until, you know, trial and error. Like, we, we partnered up. We did this. We swung the bat. Um, and then it's, like, almost like we had just had our come up well, at the same time. Well, I think is from a mother, <clears throat> from a mother's standpoint, it's hard. Now I'm, I'm there. I'm good with it. But it's hard when you raise a little boy, you know, to be a man. You're still my little boy. So it was hard for me to like take direction from you and to realize you are a man and you have your own thoughts. Cause remember you'd say, I'm a boy. I'm not going to say thank you for buying a house. Remember we'd fight like that all the time, you know? Yeah, and then shit. you always had ideas. And then I had to like step back and say, okay, like he's successful. He's smarter than me. He's younger than me. He knows more than me. And I just let you tell me what to do. Basically. I feel like you're my boss because I trust your judgment so much. Yeah. Sometimes I want you, you ask me pretty much every decision. I know. <laughs> Arthur, you're lucky you're sitting here. I'm just it's kidding. I'm going to sell. It's funny. Every, every, Do every, I have but, your permission? I'm just bi kidding. Business. I'm still laughing about the name tag. Ridiculous. <laughs> but like every business decision, I really do feel that you, I mean, I don't think it might Does be fair. Does it annoy you? No, not at all. No. Sometimes I don't know the answer, and I, but uh, you really do call me for every single decision which you i love it a yeah. lot like yeah. i get my feelings hurt you know i'm not some strong businesswoman like you know and i think that annoys you sometimes you know and i get my feelings hurt when i people say not nice things about me and you always like help me through that you're like fuck them <laughs> whatever yeah i mean because i think sometimes you just fall into caring what people think a little too much i know you have your reputation is very important in business of course i'm not you know ignorant to that of course that's obvious 
but it gets to a point where you just But it's can't. deeper than that for me because I was just raised like I don't I want to be all loving. I don't want to ever be mean to anybody ever for any reason. So it's it's just in my DNA to be that way. Right. I'm not on my phone. I'm, I got notes. So just so people don't roast me for being on the phone while my mom's talking. Um, but yeah, so, so like I said, I, I love that. I feel like we came up kind of at the same time. Our businesses took off, you know, in our own ways, doing our own thing. Um, but just to touch on your business a little more, because, um, you know, a lot of the followers are business people. They are in real estate. You know, I'm just, I want them to hear from you because you're not all over the internet, right, per se. Like, you're not some mentor, coach, selling courses and all that. So I don't necessarily get the access to you all the time. So, like, what in your mind makes a successful real estate agent? What would your characteristics be? 100% your likability and your relationships with people. So, in fact, I just... And we told, agree on this. I just told someone this the other day. No, today, on my way here, somebody was... I was talking about going into a restaurant. They were complaining about another realtor who goes into restaurants and she doesn't tip. And she's... Now that she's semi-successful, she's rude to the staff. And that's what I drill in everyone's mind. I... I feel like I'm on a job interview everywhere I go. Yep. And but I don't. Which think, is a good line. Like I think I, I forgot about how you say it. Like I'm that. on a job interview, but it, that makes me sound fake. I feel like it's just the way I am as a person. Even when I was little, I was always always try to make people feel good and give compliments, and that makes me feel good. So real estate was just a perfect career for me because I always have made people. I get joy out of making people feel good. But you have to remember, you can't remember me telling you when you got your license, like you can't drive down the street, flip somebody off. You might go list their house tomorrow and you look like an asshole, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. So uh, that goes all that goes all the way back to high school. You teach me about likability. Um, when I'd have a, a 90 in a class, I remember I this lesson very vividly. I'm glad. Um, you know, well, the difference between an A and a B when it's that, that close is how much the teacher likes like you. Likability. Um, so maybe go have a conversation with the Do teacher. Do you remember this? And the biggest, your first sales job, sales I'm job. never going to forget it. I remember having a nervous breakdown. I didn't want you to know. You were in Chicago at DePaul, okay. and you called me crying like hysterical. You go, I'm going to get expelled for self-plagiarism. Oh, my God. I remember that. I go, what the fuck is self-plagiarism? Like, I didn't go to college. You're like, I don't know. It was, remember, you, it was a class. And I you, remember the term, but I don't remember what I did. So it was, I don't remember what the class was, but... It was English. It was different reports, and then the final project was like a compilation of the reports, and you use... My a, own writing. Right, your own writing. So I said, Sal, you want to be a salesman? This is the biggest sales job of your life. You got to be likable. You got to... That worked, too. Shake I remember his that. hand. I said, you got to take accountability, and don't say I didn't know what... Don't say I didn't know what self-plagiarism was. That's not going to get you anywhere. I said, you just got to sell him. You got to make him like you and sell yourself. And remember, at first you said he wouldn't even stand up and shake your hand. He was a jerk to you, the teacher. I don't remember. And then by the time it was done, he let you take it and just took it down a grade. Remember that? I mean, not really, to be honest with you. Really? No. The one that stands out to me is the one in high school that I mentioned, for sure. Um, Every parent should happening. teach their kid that. If it's the difference between an A and a B, if you're a jerk to the teacher, you're going to get a B. If you're nice, you're going to get an A. I mean, but that's life. That's like, likability is everything. I talk to all my friends that people ask, you know, what But you know what I learned? You get more opportunities when people like you. I mean, it's simple as that. It doesn't matter what you're in. It doesn't matter what business you're in, what you do. You're going to get more opportunities if you're likable. People want to work with people they like. It's that simple. I also think I've learned this later in life. And I know to listen, but listening is so important. Mm -hmm. Like the autobiographical thing is a yeah. thing, you know? Oh, yeah. Listener. And um, I mean, I have some agents that I, I that started with me, and I'm like, I don't think they can work with me. Be for an example, you show a house, and someone goes, oh, I like this garage. And the agent goes, oh, my garage is this big. I can fit my truck. The client doesn't care about your garage. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. No, you got to listen. Yep, 100%. You can't listen to respond. That's what you'd always say, right? Can what? Listen to respond. Right. Listen to actually listen right. and learn. Right. Otherwise, you don't learn anything. You can't just listen to respond. Um, another thing that I that I teach and that I think is true, um, especially when you're a leader of a sales team, is to pretend that someone has a tattoo on their forehead that says "Make me feel important." Because people, it doesn't matter how much money they're making. You know, we have people on on my team making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Um, doesn't matter if 
they change their life financially. If they start to feel like you don't value them as a person on your team, um, and you don't think they don't think yes, I'm gonna start crying about this. I don't know. They why. don't think that uh, we're gonna get a that's gonna make me cry counter as well. But uh, counter, what's that, that like you keep you have said that a lot. So oh. but uh, but uh, no, I just think if someone doesn't feel like they're important to you or to your organization, they're gonna leave. It doesn't matter if the opportunity is not as good. It doesn't matter. Um, if they're going to make less money, it doesn't matter because that person made them feel like they're going to no, be more that's important. that's not true because I've been burned by people that I love. Well, I can tell you it is important. true from my point of view yeah. for a fact because it's happened to me. So, But I feel like you make fun of me for always talking about when I'm dead, dead and gone. But like, What do you mean that's not true? It's not true that people would leave you because they don't feel important? I think I make a lot of people feel important and value well, That's not the only that. reason people leave. Well, right. But there's definitely a plenty of occasions where that's the truth. It's probably the most crucial thing, in my opinion, as a leader, is in making people feel, feel important, without a doubt. But if, there's, if they're jealous or envious and think they don't need you, it doesn't matter how important you make them feel. Yeah, but that means they're leaving for a different reason. Right. That's just because they're jealous haters. Right. Uh, but who cares? Oh, I was going to say this. Like, making people feel important, I usually try... I try to always, when I leave somebody, act like I'm never going to see them again. Like, if I die tomorrow, how do I make them feel? Because when I'm dead and gone in a casket, I want people there to have stories about how nice I was and I'm not the kind of shoes I wore or the freaking car I drove. Of course. Yeah. That should go without saying, but unfortunately it doesn't, you know? Um, what do you got in your notes over there? I got bullet points. What is all that? Just things I want to talk about. We really have talked about most of them. But... I if want, we're going to end. No, we're not ending. I want to hear what your goals are for this year, professionally and personally. What are they? I want to help you reach them. How can I? I can't know how, help you reach them if I don't know what they are. I mean, let me think really hard. I really would like the girls on my team to, you know, at least do five million minimum in sales love that a great goal because they they can buy shares and and you know get an aba with a title company and i want to watch them grow like mm -hmm. that gives me joy I, I mean i what about personally personally with business or personally with me you whatever um it's it's all related to you and us having a business together and my team. I, know, I, don't, I, I don't I don't I don't feel like well, say I don't have financial goals. I want to open a restaurant. I knew you. that was coming. That's what I want to do. All That's right. all I want to do. That's it. I want to open an Italian vibe, mobster movies, disco music playing, shots of limoncello. I want everyone to feel amazingly special in our restaurant. And yeah, we're gonna do it. I know it's a lot of work. I'm not an idiot. I'm not delusional. I know that, but I want I want our food to be good. Food to be great. I want the food to be good, great. The food's okay, but be I great. want the feeling that you feel to be amazing. I want everyone to leave thinking they're superstars. Love it. We're gonna accomplish that. That's the only. So goal if you're I watching, have. stay tuned. We're gonna bring you on. We're gonna actually open a restaurant. We're gonna speak yeah. it into an existence. Arthur, because you're part here's of the, the thing. The thing about it is, we said this earlier. If we say we're gonna do something, we do it. Uh, you can ask anyone well, let around me. Just me. Interject this if real I quick. say I'm gonna do something, I do it. Sidebar: so. My first rental I bought. Mm. I went to a seminar. I worked at Ohio Business College. I was not a realtor yet. I was not a realtor. And I went to a seminar. Jim Unger was my boss. He'll know this. I'm shout out to Jim Unger. And it was Zig Ziglar. Do you know who that is? Yep. It's a, a motivational speaker. They had a, a little section on real estate. And I go. I got to know how this ties into the restaurant. I'm just going to say, um, person, a, a word of what you say you're going to do. So we all are like, you can make money on real estate like that. Like first time I was ever, my eyes opened, like how much you pay for something and what you can get. And I looked at everyone. We're sitting in this auditorium, and I go, I'm buying a rental. And they're all like, yeah, me too, me too. I'm like, no, I'm buying a rental. And I was getting – my divorce was not final from Daddy yet, and I was going to get $10,000 from Daddy. And um, we were rent living in Shaker Village, and I was going to get ten grand. And I had to, like, pay off my credit card debt because I was living on credit cards. I had no money for a while, right? So I had to pay, like, three or four grand on credit cards, and I had, like, six grand left. And I took that six grand – as a down payment to buy my duplex on Car Street. And I had in my refrigerator a note that said, buy your first rental until I closed on Car Street. Then I took it off. And I was, the, oh, I was the only one out of the whole That's group called that being all in rental. right there. That's I was, all, I was in. all in. Love it. I was all in. I love it. But yeah, see, person of our word. We're, we're definitely going to be opening a restaurant. So, But the cool part about it 
is that we got San Antonio, we got the video crew, so we're going to film everything from start to finish. We're going to bring everyone in on on the ideas, on names, our, I mean, our, our food, cousins are going to work it. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. So stay tuned for that. We're, we're still locking in a location. It's going to be in Cleveland. Arthur, you're going to be there to greet people. You make people feel good like I do. It's going to it's gonna be great. I'm, I'm super excited. With your Gucci, your Gucci hat. Um, your I can't wait. It's super exciting. So we got some meetings coming I gotta up. I got to buy a place in Cleveland. Yeah, you got to get a place in Cleveland. Um, all right. So this segment of the podcast that I'm most excited about that we're going to do with every guest that comes on um, is going to be what we call the free to brag segment because everyone has done something that they're proud of recently um, or even somewhat recently, but they're just too humble to brag about it. You know, not everyone's all braggadocious and wants to tell everyone because at the end of the day, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people would say like, Wow, well, you know, that I like to show things off, but like if I really wanted to show things off, right? We all could, right? The internet positions that we're in. But we don't do that because we're worried about offending people or feeling a certain way. So, but our audience is happy for people. Our audience loves to hear when people have, you know, do cool things because it motivates us to want to do that as well. So tell us what is something that you've done recently? You might be proud of, you know, you might want to brag about. It doesn't have to be something materialistic. It could be something that you're just proud of that you haven't told many people um, that you, you would be willing to share. Okay, well, I want to cry again. It's okay. Well, there's another Because it's not, I mean, it's not, it's not really about material things. Okay, I mean, I then it's say, not. I could say I pay cash for my car. I'm, I'm doing $100,000. Damn, son. I'm, <laughs> well, what I else? Mean, I'm doing a hundred thousand dollar kitchen. Damn, Damn son. son. But that's that, <laughs> but that doesn't make me proud. Like mm. I feel like honestly, I'm at an amazing point in my life where Giorgio has a house that's, you know, paid for and staff and does independent living and goes to the pony and has friends and loves life. And you, you know, are amazing in your career and your soul and you're a great person. And that you guys make me the most proud of anything in my life. I'm not not being corny. Well, I true. know, but you got. Let's give them something. Let's give them. You gotta. You gotta be something that you want to brag about. Well, I have zero I would, debt. I would go with your renovation. I mean, I have. Can I say how much money I have? No, we're not. Okay. I mean, you can go <laughs> ahead, but like. I'm fucking proud of that. Your renovation you're doing right now. Yeah, my renovate my house renovation. I, I'll say that my, I'm proud of my home, like. I used to walk the golf course and say, if I could just have that house someday, you know, and it's my house. So I wake up in it and I love it. I love and I'm it. I'm getting the kitchen I want and I don't care. Let's talk about the house is. real quick. It's a sick house. Um, you know, it, it, let's talk about it. how big is the house? 5,500 square feet. 5,500 square feet on hole 18, Plum Brook Country yeah, Club. Yeah. Crazy, right? But listen, I turned my house, I knew my house was going to be a moneymaker. I have a sign in the back that says, have a drink today for a furl tomorrow. And I just give drinks all day to the golfers. You know how much stuff I've got? I had an attorney I called one time, and I thought he was a the- A businesswoman. She's always I, thinking. I thought he was the Firelands board attorney, and I asked him a question, and he, I go, thank you so much. And I, he goes, you know, I'm not the board attorney anymore. I go, my God, I didn't know. Like, do you have to bill me? He goes, no. He goes, I've had so many free drinks from your backyard, I feel like I owe you something. <laughs> so I've gotten, I've gotten a lot of deals from having that, yeah. Well, I'm proud of you. Um, Aww. You know, I really am. I, I've seen the proud whole come up from- from start to finish, so outside of when you were a little girl, so um, I love seeing it. I love you so I, much. I, I baby. love seeing. I hope all the that success. when you, I hope one day that you find a girl. Oh my gosh! That is excited when you walk in the room, like I am. Like I hope that somebody loves you as much as I do when you walk in the room. Like when you come to so my too. house, I get so excited. Like you're gonna spend the night or come visit me. We didn't even talk about that paper bag you brought. Well, can I bring it up? Come on, hand us that paper bag. Okay. We're about to wrap up now, but I just want to kind of explain that um, my mom. <laughs> well, I, mean, I was anti-drug. Like you, you should have. Maybe you should have bragged about that. That she's that she spends hundreds of dollars a month on THC. Love Pothead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, my mom was so anti-smoking weed, and now hold on. Let's give me the bag. Give me the bag. No. Give me the bag. I was never high ever in my life till COVID hit. Hey, hey. I tried different kinds. That's nothing. 
That's just what she brought just for like a day. Listen, I got sativa and indica. That's, those are my favorite. Don't just put all my stuff down. You want one? Those are goods. I forgot. Those are some goods right there. Oh, I shit. Them. I don't want one. Elected, but like I said, though. I just wanted to say thank you for raising me to be who I am. Thank you for being such a special oh, human. Such a special human being. I wouldn't be anywhere without you. Um, I love you, and thanks for being the first guest on the podcast. Thank you, my special bambini. Love, love Damn, so son. <laughs> love you so much. Jeez. That was good. Oh my god!